All right, and thank you everyone for um, attending. So this is part, um, the last part in our series. Um, and what we're going to do today is talk about a uh, little bit about the Archibus CeraView Cloud. Um, talk about CeraView and give you an overview um, of it from kind of a PowerPoint perspective to give you a look at it. And then Greg has some pre-recorded um, sessions so we can talk through and show you some of the capabilities. And then at the end, there'll be time for questions and answers just as there have been in the past. So as we talk about our series here, um, Archibus and CeraView merged, um, I think about this time last year actually, um, and we've been doing this series and um, Archibus and CeraView have different ways to come together and one of the ways is through the Archibus CeraView cloud where um, at a high level you can take functionality that is within Archibus um, and through a combined technology stack um, integrate with CeraView. CeraView also, by the way, can be purchased as a standalone, um, and um, Greg will kind of talk about we'll kind of talk about that a little bit as we get along. So, from CeraView, I kind of indicated there are two options: one, it can integrate with Archibus, and two, it can stand alone. Um, CeraView and Archibus have some similarities, and they have some differences. Um, so at a high level, um, Archibus is a full-featured IWMS where you can do spaces and leases and work orders and asset management and all sorts of things, and of course, space management. Um, CeraView focused on space management and actually a subset of space management, which we kind of would term more workplace optimization. And where CeraView really fits are in the new working environment where people are telecommuting and you have team space. And um, if you, some of the stuff that's coming out now, they're talking about floor plans changing during the days. But um, to look at more of a people-centric workplace um, and to optimize efficiency of different teams as they come in out and as things change and teams change and you kind of look at an agile work environment. Um, so as a standalone, CeraView could be set up uh, kind of in a, uh, an office environment to have that. Um, as we talk about, you know, how it may play with an IWMS, I've got several clients that are using CeraView at some of their locations um, that are set up that way, and they're using Archibus for other functions. So it's kind of, it can be used alone, it can be used together. Um, and that provides kind of a high-level overview and what I'd like to do now is kind of hand it over to Greg. Greg will kind of talk about CeraView and uh, show you some examples, and then we'll have some time for questions and answers. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate uh, everybody joining us today. And, and you're right, uh, CeraView is something that does focus on the workplace optimization, and it really helps a lot of the organizations that we work with get a good handle on the space that they have and get it set to the right size of what they're doing. And, no longer would you have to sit on vacant space or unused buildings. The idea is that would help you identify where you have excess capacity and either reallocate it or look to offload it. Uh, and it does help you as you get, learn more data about the space that you have and how you're using it. It actually helps you develop some of the return on investment, show you where the cost savings will be in the future by the amount of rent reduced by by looking into the, some of the expenses that will be eliminated uh, from doing that kind of stuff. And then the, the last piece, of course, is making sure you understand as you set up the space that you're working with, you know, how it, how it works uh, efficiently uh, for you. But I think, you know, the, the key thing nowadays, the technology has evolved uh, dramatically, and, and CeraView did a good job of setting a foundation of understanding how to measure space utilization recognizing that people are, you know, organizations are moving away from a traditional one-to-one -one, uh, seating assignment and getting more into a agile work environment where people work in teams, people work at home, people are constantly moving around, collaborating in different ways. And so when the space is set up, it's not set up to meet the full capacity of every employee that the organization has. It, it's focused on accounting for the employees that will actually be in whatever building that they're working with so that you size it according to that kind of use. And A, you set a target of how many people you think you can accommodate, 
and then you use uh, a variety of technologies, including sensors, to help act, actually measure the utilization. How close are you to the targets that you set, and what things can you do to, uh, you know, further achieve that? So by using the system and setting up all of the data standards and organizing the people into the different, you know, departments and, and ultimately teams and neighborhoods, you get a good sense of how many bodies are assigned to any one building, any one floor. Um, difference now is that every workspace, every desk, every workstation, every office are treated the same. There is not like a, a distinction about the different types of spaces that you have. And what you want to do is account for how those spaces are A, allocated to the departments and B, assigned to the employees within those departments and teams that you're working on. And where there be, those desks are unused, free those up and help you move them around or reduce them from the portfolio. Um, and then finally, you know, as you look at the technology and you start actually measuring day to day, hour by hour if you need be, you can see where the greatest amount of usage is in the system by measuring the actual, you know, data, checking the badge data of how many people showed up for work putting sensors at the desk level to see if the desk is occupied, unoccupied, and at what point in time it is so that you can see where the peak usage of the software is and also identify where the employees typically congregate or work within the facilities that you have. And it all stems from having a user interface that I, I kind of enjoyed uh, learning a bit about. I, I certainly don't get to play with it as much as I have with Archibus and all my years, but I've seen a quite a bit of it, and I'm very impressed with what you can do with the software because it not only gives you a good perspective of the data by setting you up into a stack diagram, but it also brings the floor plan right into focus at the same time so you can navigate between the data, look at the analytics, and see the floor plan and make adjustments and changes all in kind of one screen, which I, I find very uh, useful and, and very productive for people to work with. So what I'm going to do now is going to give you a few simple examples of, of, of some of the capabilities. I got some help from my uh, coworkers that have been doing the software a lot longer than I have, but I think, you know, we set it up to give some good examples. We always like to start with what is the experience of the average employee, because at the end of the day, part of what we're doing nowadays is, is focusing on every employee and what their experience is in, in the workplace and what do they need to know. And they need to find their coworkers. They need to be able to locate a space. They may, be, may need to request a service ticket. And so just like we did in our previous example, Fairview has also developed some employee mobile technology to help them with, you know, what's going on. And so they give you some capabilities that are pretty central and focused to, you know, working with other individuals. One, of course, is the ability to locate, you know, coworkers or find employees in one form or another. And then the second is to help you locate a specific type of space. And it might be a meeting room, might be a cafeteria, might be a, a phone booth, for lack of a better word, where you need to go do some work. So we'll go ahead and start in the, you know, find a person scenario. This um, is set up in such a way that you can use it on your, you know, Android or iOS device. You can use it in a kiosk and you use it on your PC or laptop. So it's a pretty, you know, um, flexible solution with responsive design that uh, can help the employees look what's going on. And what we do is give the employee the, po the power to basically identify where they typically work, so where they sit. Once they've identified that, in this case, typically on, you know, set floor, what we're looking at, of course, is the list of employees to the right that are all assigned to that floor plan. And the second part is what employees are assigned to what specific seats so that we can actually drill down into and find the employee, their email, their phone number, and things like that to, uh, to work with. And so that's a very common use case that uh, we have for the system, and it's very helpful for employees to find each other. The other is to help facilitate finding spaces for a variety of reasons. So for instance, you know, I might be looking for meeting spaces, 
and by default we've highlighted all of the ones on the floor that we work, just to give an example. What we want to do is filter down to maybe finding spaces that can accommodate six people for us to meet with. So we can see that we've already started eliminating some possibilities. Second thing we want to do is kind of find a closed meeting room so that it, you know, it gives us some level of privacy to work with, uh, mainly because I think we'll be a bit noisy and we don't uh, want to disrupt other people. So again, it's uh, focused on just those meeting rooms. And finally, the last thing we want to do is, is using some of the attributes. We want to find a room that has a conference room, may have a projector, electron, you know, various details. And what it does is it helps us locate all of those rooms, not only the rooms that are on the floor that we're at, but telling us where there are other rooms in the same building and so that we can go to those, or even showing us in other buildings where similar type rooms are needed if we're going to work. So again, the employee, it's kind of the beginning stage of using the information everybody's managing, and it's a very helpful tool to give them that kind of capability. But let's get down into it. What can people do with the system? And so what we're going to do now is kind of take a look at just some of the basic capabilities of the software. So let's go ahead and get started here and kind of take a look. What you're, you know, what you're seeing right now is is what they call the Visual Block and Stack, or the VBS, which again is, to me, a very impressive capability that brings together a lot of information and details about what's going on in the building, at, in, on each of the floors, and down to the room level when you get there. And it gives you some very key statistics and information that you can work with to plan, change, and organize the data in a way that will help you optimize the use of the space. So what we're going to do now is, is start focusing. And as you can see, it has a typical stack diagram that shows the allocation of space to the different departments. Here we're doing it by seat count. And off to the right, we can see the total number of seats on a given floor and where there is available capacity on each of the floors to, to work with. So on top of that, we, you know, we would know how many extra spaces you know, are available for us uh, to work with on the floor. That's kind of the first thing that we focus on when looking at this kind of information. So the other thing that I find very you know, useful is the ability to work between the stack and the floor plans by simply expanding uh, under the stack each of the floor plans right away. So you don't have to navigate to a different view or screen, the floor plans are right there and give you a lot more useful information that you're working with. So here, you know, we kind of see three of the floor plans uh, of the, you know, 12-story building. What we'll do is we'll get ourselves down to the uh, ninth floor and, and focus. This floor is a good example of, of not only managing your traditional work environment of fixed seating assignments, and it shows you that, you know, the finance department is that brown area, and you can see the correlation between the stack and the highlighted spaces, but we also have the hatch space that belongs to the health and public and strategy and value creation uh, groups. So the first thing, you know, we see is on the right where we have the finance department, all of those different dots represent a seat or a workstation or a desk where somebody can work. Those round dots represent a dedicated seat assignment. So there's an exact employee that always sits there. The white dots represent vacant seats, so you know which seats have not been assigned. Whereas if we go over to the right, uh, left-hand side in the blue hatched area that represents those two different departments we refer to, we see triangles representing shared seating assignments where an employee can go to any different you know, location and, and change from day to day. At the same time, we can still fix desks that may be for a supervisor or manager, where they may have a, a team of people of uh, 12, 13 employees. They always want to know where that person is. We can set an assigned seat for them so that everybody knows where to find them with all of the relevant details of who they are and what information the employees need to know, uh, along with all the rest of the you know, flexible seating assignments that exist within the, in the solution there. So that gives you kind of a quick idea of, you know, the, the view of the floor plans uh, right away. But now let's take a look 
and, and start looking on the right-hand side where we have some information that we're looking at at the building level. And what's nice is at the building level, we can see we have the ability to manage up to 1,700 employees or a little over 1,700 employees in the building. Uh, there are 1,400 people assigned to the building, and technically, at, at least uh, based on data stuff that we've collected, the, at peak, which was you know within the past three months, we've had 1,100 employees in the building at the same time, which gives us a 66% utilization. So certainly, that's you know it's a good number, but it's things that we can do to give us a little bit better uh, indicator. So now we go look at the ninth floor. Here we see that on the ninth, we're up to 144 uh, stations. We have 118 employees total assigned, and the peak that we've achieved is 87. So our utilization is a bit lower on this floor. And so here we'll certainly be looking at various opportunities to manage the space. We can also see what teams are assigned to the space, how many stations they're assigned, but you know, what are the number of employees that they have there. So there's a lot of information that we give to everybody to work with, helping us identify all the people and write down into the individual employee records with their contact details and the building location that they're at and the space that they're assigned to in the floor plan, just like we typically do and we're familiar with in the ARCABUS side. So that kind of gives us an idea of the basic capability of managing data. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the next step, which is talk a little bit about some of the planning capabilities that come with the software. So what I'm going to do is start my next session here. And in this session, what I want to do is, um, you know, take a look at what kind of changes we can evaluate for the floor plan. And there are a couple different options that we have available to us. Uh, certainly one of them is to, and I'm trying to make sure I got the right sequence here. Okay. Seems to be going a bit slower than I thought. So one of the things that we want to do is, is kind of come up with a, a new scenario. And the idea is not to affect our production data. So we're going to make an assumption that we plan to grow by 15%. So we're going to call it the 15% growth scenario. And we can work on it at a building level, at a, at a city level, at a portfolio level. For this uh, presentation, we will boil it down to a specific location, the 100 Broadway location. And now that we have that information, it sets up a a scenario planning area that is different from the production environment. And the idea is to capture all of the transactions that we're going to set up so every time we make changes, we can record what those changes are and in one sequence they are and help us look at that data deeper when I get to a little bit further in the presentation. Uh, another way to look at it is setting up all the, the truck moves that you have to do, and so you can see the little symbol truck there. So let's start doing some simple scenario planning uh, for this right now. And what we want to do is we want to take the finance department on the 11th floor and uh, actually global functions and move them down to the 8th floor. But to do that, we don't have enough space to do that. So we need to make some changes. And one of the changes we're about to make is we're going to temporarily relocate the finance department into our scratch pad. So we're going to get them out of our way just so that we can work on the 8th floor. We're then going to go up to the 11th floor and drag and drop the space down to the 8th floor. So now that we have all of global functions or global functions now fully occupied on the 8th floor, and we see that there are two distinct kind of highlights going on here, the, the group that already exists and the one that we moved in. And what this means is we've allocated the space in the planning scenario to global functions, but we haven't assigned the employee seats. So you can see that on the left is what's been assigned. Now what we want to do is drag and drop the bar on the, on the right and bring it down so that we can actually pick the seats that we're going to assign. And by moving it around, we can see which seats we're going to use. So I'll make that final selection. 
I'll pin it, and from here, we now have the ability to assign the employees, and that becomes kind of one big, big continuous, contiguous uh, plan for global functions in the uh, floor plan. So that's one way of looking at the, you know, the square footage, uh, you know, scenario that you're working with is by simply allowing you to drag and drop and move things around in a scenario. The next thing we want to do is, is maybe make some changes to the, the plan so that we can help grow the, the portfolio by 15%. And in order to do that, we uh, changed our view and we looked at everything based on occupants. What we're going to do is use un any of the unoccupied seats as additional capacity that we can work with. And our goal is to kind of move things around on the floor so that we can get to a new layout and configuration uh, that we're working with. And so the first thing that we want to do is make some adjustments and changes is we're going to establish the stack at the occupant level, giving us those, those spaces back that I told you about, which gives us that capacity that we're looking for. And now that we have that capacity, one of the things I want to do is relocate retail products from 11 down to 1. We want to put global practices up uh, from 11 to 12, and you can see how it merges with the other group and the allocation. And we want to take finance and move it over to seven so that we have the floor, the floor fully occupied because we have the available capacity to do so. What's, what's nice here is that we've accommodated a 15% growth while freeing up additional space on the 11th floor. And as we're going through these moves, we can see all of the transactions. And every time we have a transaction, we can show a before and after as to what the space was that they had before we did the move and what the space is we have after the move and where they're coming from and where they're going to. So we see the 11 to 8 and where the, you know, where the space is going to drop as we do these kind of planning scenarios. We haven't done anything to production, but we have done all of the gaming that we need to, to establish what's going to happen as we look to execute these moves over time. So that gives you an idea of what some of the capabilities are. Uh, and like I said, for this has been one of the most exciting developments I see, but, but as we like to say, but wait, there's more. All right, so now what we're going to do here is we're going to get into and have a little bit of conversation about um, uh, utilization and optimization. And so what I'm going to do now is, is get you a little bit behind the scenes and some of the statistics and information that you have about the facility so you can see where you can make some adjustments and improvements based on the data that is available to you. And again, a lot of that can be done right from the visual block and stack or the VBS uh, screen that we're looking at. And the idea is if you look to the right, again, the total utilization at peak was 66% across the building, uh, you know, over the past three months, the peak utilization was 66%. What we want to do is get a better handle on what's going on in uh, the different floor areas and see if there's any improvements and adjustments uh, that we can make because we still have an opportunity to fill 600, almost 600 uh, seats that are not being used on the floor. So there's some things that we can do to improve the overall efficiency of what we're working with here. So knowing that that information, let's start kind of breaking things down and maybe taking a closer look at what's going on on the 11th floor. Here we see some interesting data. On the 11th floor alone, our utilization is, is, is uh, considerably lower. We're down around 50%. And now what we want to do is take a closer look at retail products just to give us an example if there's any opportunity that we can find in terms of what changes we want to make. And here we see that we have uh, 10 people um, and, you know, there's a nine uh, number of people that are unassigned at most times. And so what are we going to do? Now, if we look at the whole building or the whole department across the whole building, they're running pretty good, but that 11th floor, you know, something's not right. So we need to go in and explore that data. So. We're, we're pretty efficient for the whole department in general, but what can we do on the 11th floor to see what kind of changes 
we want to make to get us into a higher level of efficiency. So the first thing we want to do is take a different perspective on the floor and look at the stack in terms of the actual teams that reside in the floor. And the second thing we want to do is, is evaluate it based on peak utilization. So the nice thing is it gives us on the floor plan, we can see in green and, and uh, the lighter blue, the areas that are pretty efficient. So we want to focus on the more yellow, goldish, and red areas where there is opportunity to increase efficiency uh, and peak utilization for those areas. So we can see we have some opportunities here. If we look at the 10th floor, we can see that we have the strategy and value creation group uh, as an example of something that we might want to play with. And here we can see that we have 15 work points. We have nine people assigned, which basically means we have six vacant seats that are not being used at this point in time. So one of the things that we can do is maybe unassign those seats, unallocate them to that department so we can change their utilization factor and, you know, open them up and make them usable for other groups or departments on the floor. So we can see in the lower right there against the window those six stations that are sitting vacant right now. And what we want to do is, is go through the exercise to actually uh, remove the allocation. And there's actually a capability, which they call the eraser, which is basically deleting uh, some of the data and getting us back to standard footprint. So what we'll do is grab that space, or the eraser, I should say, and highlight those spaces, uh, save the change, and basically bring us down to uh, nine stations or eight stations. So we now have nine people, nine work points with eight max, which brings us to a peak utilization of 89%. So again, here we can see some of the uh, capabilities of the software to make adjustments on the fly. Now let's explore this a little bit further. Oops, sorry, went one too far. Um, sorry, I'm just going to make sure I didn't uh, rerun the same video again. I think I am. Yep, yeah, sorry, I want to get to the next video. So the last thing I wanted to cover for this presentation was, you know, access to some of the reports that exist within the software. And there are, you know, a lot of reports that are available in the system. Um, they come ready-made and they can be configured fairly easily and they can be, you know, output in PDF, Excel, uh, Word format, depending on what you want to do. Uh, so you can, you know, with the right access and privileges, anybody can go in and see them. But just like before, we can also, you know, look at reports that are available through the visual block and stack. So rather than using the report button directly, what we're going to do is move over to the visual block and stack and, and see some key reports here. So again, you know, we know what the story is for the whole building. And one of the things that we want to do is explore the reports that are available within uh, the, the, the system for information about the 100 Broadway building. So we've set up some reports specific to that. And what we want to do is, is maybe look at the block plans or allocation plans uh, for that. So what we'll do is we'll grab that report. It'll run in the background and when it's ready, uh, we'll have access to it. So we can then, you know, pick that report, open it up. In this case, uh, it'll download that from the server open it up as a PDF, and, and very simply what it shows us is uh, for the finance department with whatever teams they're on, show us the spaces on the floor plan with a summary of the different teams that exist on the floor and how, you know, how many work points and spaces that they have in the floor plan. So that's, you know, a quick and easy report that you'd be able to run within the system. So that's one good example of, of a report that you can run. Another one might be a regional stacking summary uh, that you want. So you want to take a, a broader view of the portfolio. And again, once the report's ready, we download it. Here, what we want to do is, again, we're focused on finance, but now we want to see where finance is in each and every building in the New York metropolitan area. So we have the address of the building. We can see the stack plan, and we can see where finance is 
situated with all the relevant statistics uh, for each of those. There are a number of other reports that you can run within the system, and one of those uh, reports is kind of like a portfolio summary report that we'll go ahead and load here in a second. And this is, you know, looking at our entire portfolio, listing all of the locations that we have, identifying when we have lease space, what is the lease situation, what is the rent that we're paying, and then drilling down into and looking at all the organizational allocations and, and details about spaces occupied, allocated, et cetera, across the portfolio. And then some nice summaries uh, for each of the portfolios, what is the total occupancy, looking at you know, vacancy and occupancy by the different uh, departments in the portfolio, and then bringing it down building by building um, as needed as well. So there's some nice features. Other reports get into that kind of utilization data that I was talking about, where you're using sensors or badging data to tell us you know, when the peak traffic is or how well the building's being used, getting, you know, using the data to help determine when the building is used and where the flow of people are in the spaces that we've allocated, and then just looking at peak utilization on a day-by-day -day basis uh, for the different types of space that we have in our buildings to see how effective we are in accommodating and accounting for any days that might be holidays in our scenario. So there are any number of reports that can tell us what is going on within the portfolio and give us a good sense of, of how well we're using our space and what things we can do to get better optimal utilization of the space that, that we're working with. So that was a quick overview of the CeraView capabilities uh, within the system here. So what I want to do is bring it back to Peter and just wrap this up and thank everybody for attending. So Peter, take it away. So this is the last webinar in our series. If you uh, missed any of the other sessions, we had an overview of Archibus Cloud, um, a webinar series on all of the other components that are involved, which include foundations, space, assets, uh, building operations, reservations, and this was the last one, which was uh, CeraView. Um, and if you'd like to see any of them, there's a link right there. And then if you've got questions, uh, Greg, you just forward the slide. I think Lisa's going to come back. If anyone has any questions, it doesn't look like I see any yet. Um, we are happy to answer those. Yeah, let's give it a few minutes and see if anybody's typing up anything. And as I did mention, this is recorded, so we'll be sending out a follow-up next week so that everybody has access to the recording, including that link to any of the on-demand webinars. And if you do have questions after the session's concluded, you can always email peter at fmsales at rand.com. Okay, we do have a question. Um, so, she asks, I'm not sure if our Archibus package includes CeraView. Will standard Archibus achieve these space planning tools? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think CeraView will focus on the level of capability that you saw in today's presentation. Archibus does a great job of managing inventory and provide some of the planning tools, but the capabilities that you saw today will be more centric to the CeraView component. And we are looking at way, you know, we already have done some integrations between the two platforms and we're looking at how to best converge the technologies over time. Have any colleges or universities implemented this yet? Not that I'm aware of. We've had some questions come up from a couple, but again, a lot of it depends on what the use case scenario is. So we haven't seen a high need for it yet. More colleges and universities have focused more on the Archibus space management, but we have a couple of queries that we're following up with uh, to see if that makes a good fit for them. So is the CeraView, is that a module that we can purchase to add on to our current software? So um, I don't know if maybe you want to 
expand on whether that's available separately with Archibus Enterprise or separately with Archibus Cloud? Yeah, and why don't I get that because I can see who's asking questions so I know what, who owns what. Um, so, um, Saraview can be integrated with Archibus. Um, and um, as we go at different levels, we're at the base level right now where um, if you're managing your floor plans um, through the typical um, Archibus connection um, to the Archibus database, um, we can push the data from there over into Saraview. Um, and the person who asked this question, I will give you a call and explain in a little more detail. Okay. Okay, yeah, it looks like two people had asked um, about, um, about that as a module, so you could follow up with uh, Keisha as well. Um, and then the higher ed thing, that was an interesting comment. I mean, um, we do very few, we track very few space in any of our higher ed clients. Most of the higher ed clients will use um, the system um, for um, either space reporting, um, you know, up to, the, you know, whatever university system you are, sometimes if there are grants involved um, through that level, usually we don't track people at a university, not that we can't. Yeah, Peter, I think that's a good observation, at least from the majority of colleges and universities that I, I've talked to, that that has been a, a requirement that hasn't really existed is, is, you know, the assignment of people to space. Um, there's a lot of, you know, internal, you know, politics that, have to be dealt with before you get that. Um, but assuming you do, then yes, you probably could evaluate it. So you have to make some decisions before you decide you want to pursue that. 